Hi all, this is Juneet here from Edureka and I welcome you all to this interesting session where we're going to see how we can visualize gradients using feature map. So without any further delay, let me quickly walk you through today's agenda. First off, we're going to start this session by understanding the problem statement and the workflow that goes along with it. Following that, I'll be discussing various tools and frameworks that we are going to use now and then we'll finally jump into the project over here. All right guys, so coming back to our project here. So what we're going to do here is we'll be taking a data set which has images of a cat and dog. So important agenda over here is not that you know cat and dog, but in order to train a model in such a manner that we can take the gradients from them and create a feature map on top of it. So what does this feature map over here mean? So let me quickly take a pen here and show you what we are trying to do here. Let's say we have this image and this image, uh, let's say this is of a cat. So cat has so and so cone and some whiskers over here. You see, when I train this model, my data set over here is going to have like 25,000 images of a cat and similarly it will be 25,000 images of a dog. So our model will train in different different variations. But you know, when I try to predict this, obviously there is going to be a feature map or let's say gradients that I have. And what this feature map does is wherever the probability or the pattern that represents a cat are high, we will use the feature map or the probability value over there is going to be high. So what happens, what we're going to do now is we'll just change the color. Let me take some red color. Wherever the feature that represents cat is that, that region would be red in color. And rest of the region, you know, as it moves away from the features of cat would become cold. That is somewhere something, let's say blue over here. So this is what we're going to do here. First off, we'll take a couple of data set and we'll try to train it. And then our, as the main agenda says, we are trying to visualize the gradients. Usually people say that deep learning uh, models are black box model. And this is basically we are trying to interpret our deep learning model over here. So moving ahead, let me now quickly walk you through workflow here. So what we're going to do, first off, we're going to import our data. I've already loaded my data to my OneDrive or a Dropbox. And once we load our data, we're going to segregate them into cat and dog just so that I can use data generators. And once I train my model, I won't be creating my own model here. Instead, what we'll do is we'll use some pre-trained model. And let's take something like Inception model or VGG 19. And finally, we'll have, we'll have trainer model and then we'll try to test this up like how well our model is working. And then the next stage, what we're going to do is we're going to use a GradCam method to predict or to get a feature map. And this would be in the form of a heat map. And finally, in the last stage, what we'll do is we'll take our original image and then we will paste or we'll reimburse the heat map on top of this. So in this way, we can see where exactly are or which region is the pattern that it recognizes. So let me now quickly move ahead and talk about the various tools and frameworks that we are going to use. So as this is a deep learning model and it requires huge amount of compute power, uh, I'm going to use Google Colab as it gives me a free GPU service. And coming down to the various frameworks that we're going to have. First off, we're going to use TensorFlow. And apart from that, there's some generic ones, something like uh, NumPy and Matplotlib. All right, guys. So let us now quickly move to our code editor and see how we can implement this interesting project. So as you can see, we have come to a code editor over here. Let me change our runtime. Usually it's in none. So we'll change this to a GPU one and we'll save this. So now what we're going to do is, as you can see, I've already imported a couple of uh, lines of code. So first off, I'm going to ignore the warning. So this is what I'm going to do here. And then these are the basic modules usually used for, you know, handling the file. So OS with OS, we can deal with path. Shuttle basically is used to copy the file from one folder to the other. And glob over here is we usually use glob for pattern matching. Let me quickly execute this up and we'll go ahead and this is where I have uploaded my data set in this particular Dropbox and once I execute this, you will have a zip file and we'll use this part to unzip our files. So let me execute this as well. This will take a moment or two. So let's wait for some time. As you can see here, we have successfully imported our data. So now you can see here we have this train folder and let me give a quick refresh. So this is our test folder and train folder and this train folder should have the cat and dog folders. As this is a pretty huge file, this is going to take quite some time. So what we're going to do now is I just create this variable called as train directory and then we have this original directory. All our images are present as I mentioned in this train folder and then we have the classes dog and cat. So for here, what I'm going to do first, let me execute this and move down to our next block. What we're going to do over here is for scene classes that is the classes here can be cat or dog and we are going to create just a path. So this is where we are going to use OS. Let me zoom in over here for you guys and let me minimize this. So as you can see, I'm going to create this destination path. So this would be the extension of this data set. Let me change this to data set. 
let's execute this and now what this would do is data set slash cat or dog and then if that particular part doesn't exist then we have to make that dir and this part over here basically you know, based on the pattern so the name of the files that we have over here if i can show you here it starts with either cat or dog and then we have a serial number so let's try to look into that at once so as there are a huge amount of images so we are unable to see this so if you want to see that so what i can do is os dot list dir and let me just copy this path so copy path and add it over here and let me execute this so as you can see we have various cats and dog images and now if i have to come down here and manually do this work without glob it's obviously going to take a lot of time for me so this is what i'm going to do here so let me execute this part of here shift enter this would obviously take quite time and yeah it's done so let me refresh this we should have this new folder that we have created data set and within this data set i should have cat and dog and this folder will have images only of a cat and this will have images only of a dog now that we have our data set ready we can use data generator and we can easily you know pre-process our data and also add that to our model so now what we'll do here we'll try to first build a model and then we'll pass our image to pre-process it so let me give a comment so before that let me zoom in a bit over here and let me give a comment so let's say building a model so for this we will be using a couple of libraries let's say import numpy as np then we have import mat.lib as plt we can also get some import pandas these are the generic ones as pd and now let's import something which is more specific to our model so over here what i'm going to do is from tf that is tensorflow first off let's import tensorflow import tensorflow as tf and now what we'll do from tensorflow or that is tf dot keras dot layers import as we're going to use just the pre-trained model so we'll have to use just two that is going to be dense dense layer would be for classification and then we can also use flatten and as of now we'll just ignore this tensorflow so first off we have got the layers now we'll import the model so from keras dot models import model this is basically functional api so we have two options usually that is sequential or functional api and to get a functional api we use the model so moving on to the next one let's get a pretend model so we have keras dot applications dot let's see which one we can take we have DenseNet, we have inception resnet v2 let's take something new so let's take inception v3 and let's import let's see what we have over here so we have inception v3 we have that so we'll get that up then we have to you know get the pre-processing as well right so pre-process input and yeah this should be it and finally moving on to getting our image so from keras dot pre-processing dot image import let's see what we have so we have to get our image data generator over here so this should be it and just for the generic sake i'm also going to import keras so now we are done these are the libraries that we would need for building a model and these are the ones that are true generic so now that we have executed this let's now quickly go ahead and build a model so this thing happens in two stages let me quickly show you that as you all know first off we are going to build a base model and this base model would be our inception v3 whatever outputs i have of inception v3 i'm going to add this to my flatten layer and then back to our deep neural networks so and over here we are not going to train the weights so for every layer we are going to see that you not know, trainable is equal to false and this is how it's going to work and this model that we have will be our final model which will give name as model so let's now quickly do that so we'll give the base model and what we'll do is we'll call the inception v3 now we're going to provide the input shape of our image so input shape let's say 256 comma 256 comma 3 3 as you all know it's for the channel and then we have include top that is false and this is all there is we have to do to get a model let me execute this now this is gonna you know make sure you're connected to the internet because this is gonna download inception v3 once this is done as i mentioned earlier we are not gonna train any layers over here so for this what i'm gonna do for layer in base model dot layers and layer dot trainable would be false and now we execute this yeah now that we are done what we're going to do now whatever is the output of our base model 
we are going to take that and add that to our actual model. So for that, we'll let's say we are going to use functional API. So let's say X is one variable and we are going to flatten this. And obviously, you're supposed to give the input for this. No, for the input for this is going to be base model dot output. And again, we'll have X. So over here, we're going to give a dense layer. And as we have number of classes as two, so our units over here will also be two. Activation that I'm going to use is going to be sigmoid. And the input for this is going to be X. This part is going to be the input for this. And finally, let's create a model. So we'll give the name here as model and we'll say model and just give the inputs and outputs. So base model dot input. And finally, we have our X parameter. And now let's try to see model dot summary. But before that, let's compile a model. And here we're going to give a couple of parameters. We have optimizer. The optimizer I'm going to use is Adam. And then we have loss. Let's say we're going to use binary cross entropy. So we have Keras dot losses, but binary cross entropy. And then we also have metrics here. And we are going to provide the metrics to be accuracy. And now let's see the summary of this. So for this model dot summary, and let's execute this. So as you can see, this is going to be a pretty huge model. And although it's not necessary for us to use such a complicated model on such a simple data set, but you know, we are just trying to see what's going to happen, right? So this is something new that we are trying to do here. So this is the input layer. As you can see, it's 256, 256, 3. And finally, we are going to take the outputs. Let's see how our output over here looks like. This definitely has a huge amount of layers. So as you can see here, this is our activation function. Then we have mix 10 concatenate. And finally, we are trying to add this, right? So flatten and then finally we have dense layer which has two outputs looks great no? So now what we're going to do in our next stage. We are going to pre-process our image That is pre-process our data using data generators So we are just going to use training data generator. So let's say train Data gen over here. We are going to have image data generator So a couple of things we can add all of these values here so let's now start adding all of these values and the more the number of values I add, it's like I'm adding more number of dimensions. So let's now get started. So let's say feature center. Uh, we can set this to true and then we have stepwise center. Let's ignore that. We can add this up rotation range. This is you know how much our image builds. So let's say 0 0.5 or let's say 0 0.4 and then we have width shift. Let's give this as 0 0.3. But then we'll do horizontal flip. Let's say true. And we are also going to add a pre processing function, which is pretty important. The reason is because as we're using this inception model, so this model are trained on certain data set. So we are just going to provide that as well. And let me quickly see what that's going to be. So that's going to be this part pre process input. So let me scroll down for this. Let's add pre process input. And then let's say vertical flip. It's totally up to you. We don't have to rescale over here. The reason is because anyways, we are passing this through a pre-processing function. So we don't need to do that. And then let's see something else. We can add this zoom range. Let's say zoom range to be 0 0.4. Similarly, we can also add some more values. Let's say something like shear range 0 0.4. And I think this should be fine. So what I'll do is just for the simplicity sake, Let's try to add this one below the other just so that it looks good, right? So, so we have added this data generator. As you can see, we have added a couple of dimensions and we'll execute this now. So now finally for this, we have one more step. That is, let's say train data. We'll give this name and this is going to be train data gen with the function flow from directory and we are just going to pass a directory name. And let's come back here and this is going to be our directory. So we'll copy the path and now we'll give directory name over here. Then obviously we need the target size. So as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be 256, 256. This should be similar to what we have provided or else your model will throw an error. And then as is a pretty huge amount of data, we are going to pass some batch size as well. So let's say batch size to be 36. And let me do the same thing here. Let me put this one below the other. So we are done with this and let's try executing this from now. So as you can see here, we have 25,000 images. 
which belong to this class and each class has 25,000 image. So if you want to see what is the index value which we have, let's say train data dot index. Now you can see zero here represents cat and one here represents the dog. So this is great. Now finally what we're going to do is we're going to train our data before that. Let's add a model checkpoint. So let me give checkpoint. So before we move ahead for model checkpoint, I'm pretty sure now you might be wondering how does this data would look like. So let me quickly show you that as well. So before we go ahead, let me add that as well. So visualizing the data, right? And let's see how this would look like. So for this first off, we have this function that is train data dot next. This returns two things. One is the image and the label. So we have train image and then we have label. Although label isn't that important, but yeah, let's add them up. So if I just see t dot train t image, this is basically, you know, all the images that we have. Now we'll pass them one another like one after the other and let's see how that would look like. But before that, let me see the shape. So as you can see here, we have 36. If you're wondering why we have 36, that's the batch size that we have given here. And 26, 256, 256 is the size and 3 is the number of channel. Instead of 36, we can also give batch size as 64. Let's increase the number of images. And now you can see our value here changes from 36 to 64. And now let's try to plot the images. For this, we'll create a function. Let's say def plot image. And we are going to pass image array and then label. Let me tell you what this thing gives. So let me give a comment here. So the input here would be array of images, right? So image array. That is going to be t image. And output, we are going to plot the images. So now what we'll do for i in image array, right? So image array. And what we'll do here, if I try to do this, all the 64 images would get printed out. So I don't want that. We'll add a function here called as enumerate. And with this, I can also get the index over here. What we'll do, we'll give a name here as image. Index will be IDX and then image IMG. Uh, this looks great. And what we'll do here is we'll just print for the top five. So if index is less than or equal to, let's say we want 10 images. So if this is the case, then we'll have plt dot figure. And here we're going to pass figure size. Let's say five cross five. Then we have plt dot I am show. We're going to pass image here IMG and the title for this would be plt dot title the size of our image. Let's say the size over here. That's going to be shape and finally plt dot show. We can turn off the axis. plt dot axis. Uh, this can be false and let's execute this. So now all we need to do is pass this image over here. So let me copy this and add a code and all we need to do is pass this part here T image. So let's quickly do that and let's execute this. So as you can see, we have images of cats and dogs and obviously uh, this data has pre processed. All of these are pre processed images and this is how it works. Now, if you want to increase the number of image, you can definitely do that. Let's try adding label. So instead of this, let's also add label. If I want to add label, then I can add, you know, one more value, but let it be for now. So now what we'll do we can just turn off the axis that's done. Yeah. So this is all that we can do over here and let's now move ahead and let's try to create a model or train a model. So let's do that. So that is from Keras dot callbacks import model checkpoint and early stopping. And now we'll just create a class instance of this. So for model checkpoint it's going to be MC and we have model checkpoint. So let's see what are the different parameters. First off we have file path. You know this is where our best file is going to be saved. So we'll say best model is going to be saved here as best model dot h5. So this is great. Then we have to monitor validation accuracy. And apart from that we have verbose. We want to see what's happening. So we'll say verbose is equal to one. Save the best file or save best only. This would be true. And yes, so this is fine. Let me just rearrange all of these just for better aesthetics. So we are done with model checkpoint and now we'll come down to early stopping and we are going to say EC or ES early stopping. So over here as well, we are going to see what we're going to monitor. So monitor validation accuracy. And then we have minimum delta. So here I'm going to keep a big value. As our model is a bit complicated, 
what we'll do is instead of a big value let's take up a narrower value 0 0.01 then we can have patience that is the number of times it should wait so it's going to be 5 same here we're going to have verbose this should be 1 and mode obviously is auto so this should be fine so now let's try to fix this up let's align this and we'll put all of these in an array so it's be cb that's callbacks and we'll have model checkpoint and early stopping and we execute this and we are done so finally what we'll do we're going to train a model model returns factor here called as history so this is going to be his and then we have model dot train or it's going to be fits so fit generator so now we'll do we have to pass the generator we have test generator right so we have test data or it's going to be train data and then we have steps per epoch let's say we're going to give steps per epoch over here as 10 the number of epochs that I want to follow we can give 30 or any number 300 or whatever because as we have callbacks so once we know that model has trained properly we don't have to worry about it and then we'll also pass callbacks callbacks will be CB this looks great and let's try to execute this now make sure your runtime is in GPU or else it's definitely gonna take quite a lot of time to train your CNN model meanwhile that is training let me just give a proper alignment here and yes, this should be fine. So as you can see here, we have done a small mistake. So although the model has trained perfectly fine, but the issue is that our model checkpoint didn't work and the reason for this is because I had done a small typo So what we're gonna do here is let me quickly take this up validation accuracy and let me come back here and let me fix this up And let me do the same over here What happens over here is if I don't try to do this our model might end up overfitting. Let me do a cross check here once again So we don't have validation accuracy here, right? So that's why it's not working. So what we'll do we'll just take up accuracy and add it over here so one more thing keep in mind if I try to rerun this and this block again So what happens is my model will start training from here because everything is saved So if you want to retrain your model all you need to do is just go back on the top Go to the place where you have initialized your model that's over here and once you come here We'll just try to run all of these once again So this is the part where we have to rerun and once this is done now all we're gonna do is Come back to this model checkpoint. We'll run this and this as well so now instead of going through all 30 epochs i'm pretty sure it's gonna be like very few so as you can see our model stopped training at the ninth epoch although i could have gone all the way to 30th epoch but it's of no use and apart from that one more thing i would like to show you here is initially we had loss here as one and then as you can see the loss started decreasing and here again it's 0.1 percent or 10 percent loss and then the accuracy here is 97 percent so whatever the best model is there it gets saved over here in model.h5 we'll try to load this model and let's see how our training went but before that let me copy this path let me add over here from keras let me close this and zoom in a bit so this is fine so from keras dot models import a load model and we'll just give the same name model is equal to load model and then we'll just pass the path and this should be fine and we'll just load this up as i mentioned earlier let me close this for now you know this we have this history function let's see how well our model has performed so if i put here as let's say h is equal to hist dot history and now what we'll do is h dot keys obviously there will be just two that is loss and accuracy and let's try plotting them up so plt dot plot as is the dictionary we'll just have to press h of loss plt dot plot h of accuracy and then we can just say plt dot title let's say loss versus accuracy and finally it will be plt dot show let's execute this so as you can see we have our loss versus accuracy but we're still not able to understand which is what let's give a color this color here would be let's say blue I guess just B would be sufficient or we can pass this as a string blue and let's see if we can give any other value here 
So what we can do here is as you can see we can add a marker when we can also add this line style. So uh, let's go with this. Let me copy this and paste it over here. Let's see how this would look like and let me execute this up. So as you can see this is what our accuracy here represents. Both of them are same color. Let me just change this to let's say red. So for every epoch as you can see our accuracy has increased and for every loss you know for every epoch our loss has also decreased. If you want the same thing to be done for our loss to see how our epoch has worked. So let me add this and execute this now. So as you can see right for every epoch our loss value has decreased and this is the you know it's below 10% now. So this is all there is about you know building a model and creating predictions and if you're someone who's really curious about how well a model is working what I can do is I can just create a function and pass an image but that's not our major agenda. So our major agenda here first was to build a model and we'll train this on some let's say some class and over here we are representing cat and dog and once I have this model I will create a grad cam function which will take gradients from this deep learning model and it will create a heat map and whatever is my image is going to plot on top of that. So let's now quickly move ahead and do that. And but just in case if you're someone who is really curious to see what's happening here. Let me write a text validate our image. So I've already written the code for this. Uh, let me just copy that up. So as you can see I have written my function here. Let me give this in bold. So now what we're going to do here is basically get the path load the image using load image function for this we are supposed to import this from our libraries over here. So we'll come back up pre processing image over here. We'll say load image and image to array and we'll run this up. So we'll scroll down. So we have loaded our image then we convert this into image to an array. So let me remove this and once this is converted to image to an array. So what we are going to do now is basically try to expand our model here. But before that we also are supposed to pre process our image. So we have i is equal to pre process input here. We are going to just pass the image that I want that is i. So pre processing your input is pretty important and this part over here. I'm just trying to increase the dimensions. So which we can see over here. So let's now execute this. It says image is not defined. Maybe that's because of this as you have already loaded here, right? So we don't have to provide that. And one more thing here is make sure your size is same. It's going to be 256 comma 256. So as you can see here model has predicted it fine. So images of a dog and the reason why you're getting this initial error is because we haven't regularized it. So if you want you know all you can do is divide this by 255 and so you cannot divide this by 255. The reason is because you know we have already pre processed it. So this would remain the same and this is what it is. I can remove the axis plt dot axis will just turn this as false. And yeah, so this is what happens. So as you can see here our model has predicted fine. So the image is of a dog and yes the image was indeed of a dog. We can take some other random image now. Let me zoom out. So let's say we'll take any random image copy the path close this up for now and try adding this to the path over here. So let's see what is this image of. And as you can see this image is of a cat and our model has also predicted that this image is of a cat and just one last thing before we move ahead. So randomly let me choose any value. Let me take copy path come up here and pass that particular image. Let's now see what we get. So as you can see this is a dog and our model has predicted it. So it says this model is of a dog. So now that we know what exactly is happening here. So what we'll do is now we'll try to visualize. What makes our deep learning model think that this is of a dog. So what feature here represents that of a dog. So for that we use something called as grad cam. So let me write down here. So let me give a title here. Let's say grad cam visualization. So grad cam. So if you're someone who's wondering what does this grad cam represents here. Well grad cam over here is basically class activation map. So gradient class activation map. So that's what grad cam represents. Let me just put this in bold and execute this out. So this is what grad cam is. So what we're going to do first off read the image and then we are going to extract the gradients from our image and then finally we are going to display that on a function. So first off over here what we're going to do is from keras or pre processing import image. Okay that's something which we have already done. So now what we'll do is def get image array and here we are going to just give the path img path. So now what we're going to do let's try to write some comments here. So what does this take as an input? 
input here is gonna be like takes in image path and output over here basically we like uh, gives our pre-process image this is basically similar to what we had done earlier so first off we have path this will be image path and now we have image img let me scroll up a bit so we are gonna have load image and we are just gonna give target size and all that so what we'll do we'll just copy this from here obviously first off we are gonna load our image and then we are gonna convert that into an array and then finally we have to do all of these so we'll just do it till here copy this and add this over here let us give a proper indentations so basically here we're trying to expand the dimension the reason for this is because you know a model takes in the batch size then size of the image and then the number of channels so if it's 256 comma 256 we should have number of channels that's going to be three and batch size that's going to be one so this is what this function does either you can use this or you can use numpy dot expand dimensions that's totally up to you let's say this as image we'll actually change this for all img and even this would be img and we'll add this as well over here and finally this would return as image so i hope you understood what we're trying to do here uh, this is a pretty simple stuff and let's execute this so this looks great so now finally what we're going to do we're going to import tensorflow as tf and now we're going to write a function for our grad cam so what does this function do well this function is basically used to generate the heat map in our artificial neural networks so this is a pretty advanced topic in deep learning and if you're someone who's totally new to this i would definitely first recommend you to go back to the basics you can start off by looking into our deep learning full course videos and then you can come back here after doing some research on gradients and how this uh, deep learning models work what are we going to do we're going to create a function so let's say make grad cam heat map so there are a couple of parameters that this thing takes in it takes in image array so the image array is basically what we are going to have over here and then it's going to take in model then we have to take the last convolution layer name and then we also need to provide predicted index to be false so pred index we'll make this as none so this is great now what is the last layer of a convolution layer we can just scroll up and see the summary we'll get to know that but meanwhile let's just get on to this now so what we're going to do here is first we create a model that maps the input image to the activation functions of the last convolution layer as well as the output predictions so we are going to create a model here let's say grad model and for this we can use either tf.keras or you can just directly use keras so for a change let's use tf.keras we know that there are a couple of models so we have models dot model we are going to use this so for this what we're going to do we are going to pass in a couple of values so it will be model dot input and then we have model dot get last layer this is where we are going to pass the last convolution layer name so let me copy this and paste it over here and we want the outputs of this and then finally we have model dot output and let's add this thing into a bracket here so this is what we are doing we are created a model where we are having input layer and then the gradients from our last model and then the output of our model so now that we have done this so now what we're going to do is we are going to compute the gradients of a top predicted class from our input image with respect to the activations from our model which is present in this last convolution layer so this is the only way that we can access the gradients so we have this tf dot gradient tape this is the function let's say as tape and now what we'll do is last convolution layer output last convolution layer output and then we have the preds this is what is written by our grad model so we have our grad model here let me copy this and over here i'm going to paste the image array so this is where we are going to try to predict our model so now what we'll do if pred index that is this part pred index if this part is none let me copy this and paste here is none if this is the case then what we'll do is we just provide the predictions tf.argmax pred index let me copy this again this will be tf we can also use np.argmax so it's totally up to you and now this is uh, whatever predictions we have so preds that's present over here and then all we're going to give the index zero so if this is the case and then what we do is we'll have class channels uh, we're going to add all the preds value so preds all these and then we have pred index let me paste it over here pred index so this is a scenario here so now what we'll do is we'll take off so now what we're going to do is you know from the feature map we're going to pull in the gradients so grads is equal to tape dot gradient 
So here we're going to pass the class channel and then the last convolution layer. As you know, class channel is present here, and then we have the last convolution layer output, which we have captured it from here. So finally, what we're going to do is we're going to get the mean of this. So well, let's say pool. Let's give the name here as pool gradients or grads. So we'll have tf dot reduce mean. Now we'll just pass grads. Then we have axis is equal to zero comma one comma two. That's because we have three channels. And finally, now we'll put this in the form of a heat map. So we'll have lost convolution layer output. This would be the same thing, but present at the index zero. And now we'll put this in a heat map. Let's give the name here as heat map. So this will be last convolution layer output. And then we'll give this arch symbol pool grads. And then finally we have tf dot new axis. So now we'll do tf dot squeeze just to bring them in a shape. So heat map. This would be equal to tf dot squeeze and then we are going to pass heat map here and finally for the visualization purpose we are going to see how this would work so heat map this is equal to tf dot maximum heat map comma zero and then we have tf dot math dot reduce max and here we're going to have heat map and this would basically return me heat map numpy heat map like Basically, the numpy array of that. So return heat map dot numpy. So let's now try executing this. And we have successfully executed this function. I know it's pretty complicated and pretty huge function. And you know, in one go, it's pretty hard to understand this. If you're having further queries, either you can mention them in the comment box below. And the other way you can do is you can just get down to the official documentation of TensorFlow and check this out. So now that we have done with this, now we'll mask the heat map on the image. So let me give a comment. For this, we are going to import a couple of libraries that is import matplotlib.cm as cm. And then we also need to import IPython display, although you can use plt.display or show, but let's try using different you know, library here, IPython.display. Import image and then also the display. Let's execute this up. And now what we are going to do, we are going to create a function. We are going to say save and display cratcam with the name of function. This takes an image path. We'll also have the heat map which we have created. Then place where we want to save our gradcam image and then the alpha value. So we'll have df save and display gradcam. So we'll have to take image path and then we have heat map. Then we have cam path. So you can just give any name. We'll give it as cam.jpg or you can give any name you want. And then we'll also have the alpha value. I'll explain you what does this alpha value mean in a while. So, but as of now, just keep this in mind. So we have the alpha values. So the input image, whatever you pass over here, make sure it's not expanded and should not have a batch size. So that's what it means. So what we're going to do, we have image. So we'll have image. We'll have this as load image and we'll have image path. And now we'll try to convert this into an array. Instead of writing this again, what I'll do is image to array and we'll pass this over here itself. This looks great. And now what we'll do is we'll rescale the heat map to the range 0 to 255. So we have heat map. So we'll have np dot units. And we're gonna pass 8. Then we have 255 times heat map. This is totally up to you. Either you can do this or you can divide this by 255. It's totally up to you. So now we'll try to color map this. Let's say jet is equal to cm dot get c map or color map. So here you can give either gray whatever value you want, but I'm going to use a jet and finally we are going to use RGB values of the color map. So let me give here. So we have jet colors. So we have jet np dot arrange. We're going to pass 256. Then finally jet heat map. So now what we're going to do now is we are going to create an image with RGB colorized heat map. So let's do that. So as you can see, we have done this over here now. And in the next stage, what we're going to do, we are going to reimburse or we're going to superimpose heat map to our original image. So heat map basically has the gradients. This is what happens over here. Superimposed image that is heat map times alpha plus image. This is why we're using the alpha value. So this is what is happening here. And finally coming down to, you know, saving our model or saving our superimposed image. This function here, superimposed image dot save and whatever the path you have given, that's a path where it's going to get saved. And finally, we are going to return the image, right? 
So we're going to plot the cam image or whatever you call that up. So this is all there is about building this function. And now finally, what we're going to do is we're going to create a function which would make our life easier. So I've already written this function on top. This is kind of similar to what we have done earlier. So let me quickly get that function up. So before that, let me zoom out. For our simplicity sake, I've already written the function here. So basically what we're going to do here is provide the path. We are going to give a function call for a previous function that we had written. And what this function does is first of it converts the image whatever we have to an array and then we call this function make grad cam heat map. So this is done and finally we are going to show the heat map what is generated and then we are going to see whatever the predictions have been done and finally we are going to see whether it's of a cat or a dog and finally we are going to display our this path image on the heat map and let's see how this would look like. So I have executed this and now all we need to do is give a function call to this. So let's give a function call. This is a random image that I've chosen and let's add it over here. So as you can see, this is the image of a dog. So a model has predicted the images of a dog and this is how a heat map would look like. And when I try to map this heat map to this image, you can see this particular model took uh, this nose as an important function. So what we'll do is let's go to Google now and let's take any random image. Let's say there is a dog and a human. So man and dog. So let's take any image. I think this is a good image over here. So what should happen now is the heat map should be formed on the dog. So let me save this image and upload it over here. So let's try to upload this. And now all we're going to do is pass that image. So we have this one smiling man and her dog. We'll copy the path and pass it over here. And let's see how this would look like. Let me execute this. So as you can see first off over here according to the heat map, this purple color over here represents that we don't have any feature. And this is where you know we have multiple features. Anything closer to red, it means that that's the place that it's referring to. So here we know we have a picture of a human being. So if I scroll down now, as you can see, there is no heat map which is generated over here. But the model has taken into consideration of you know the dog's tail and the fur and all of that. And let's see what it has predicted. It has predicted right the images of a dog. And if you want to see the original image, so this is the original image over here. Let's give it a try with other image here. Let's see how that would look like. So let's say something like something more complicated. I think we can take this into consideration. Let's try downloading this and let's upload this and see how this would look like. So we'll upload our image and we have this image present here. We'll copy the path and pass this through this function here. So this is the image. So as you can see here, this is the image of a dog. So from the heat map, you can see that, you know, it has taken the features which is present over here. So it's like nose, mouth and all of that. So as we move away from this, uh, you can see like the towards a human being. It has not referred to any of the features of the human being. So this is how you can actually, you know, visualize the gradients that are being predicted in our model. So with this, we come to the end of our session. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you have any further queries, please do mention them in a comment.